Hey guys, Scott Donchkowski here with another Lightroom video. Today, we're gonna talk all about organizing. I'm gonna run through some ways that I organize my photos. We're gonna talk about um, basically everything that happens on the left-hand side of your screen once you're in the library module. So let's dive right in. Um, we're gonna assume that you've already imported some photos into your Lightroom catalog. Um, I've already done that. I've imported 87 photos from our last trip to Kenya, which was a year and a half ago with Aperture Academy. Um, and I'm gonna talk about what to do next. Like you've just imported all these photos, what do you do? Um, so let's just dive right in. Um, I'm in the library module right now. Um, to get there very quickly, just hit the G key on your keyboard. Uh, I love keystrokes in Lightroom. I love them because they're so easy to remember. Usually most of them are just single letters or numbers, which is awesome. You don't have to remember command, control, alt, option, shift, like none of that stuff. But most of the time, these keystrokes are single letters or numbers, which is really nice. So G gets you right to the grid. If I hit G, you hear me hit it, I'm in the grid. If I hit E, I'm in the loop. Let me go back over here. If I hit E, I'm in the loop mode, G for grid. If I'm in the develop module and I wanna get back to the grid, G, that's it, super, super simple. Okay, so we're gonna start here in the library module, in the grid mode. Um, and again, what we're gonna talk about here is mostly happening on the left-hand side of your screen in the library. How do we organize these photos? So let's break it down. Let me get rid of published services here. So there's three things we need to be pay attention to um, when we're organizing. Number one is the catalog, number two is the folders, number three is the collections. The catalog basically is everything that you've ever imported into Lightroom. It's just kind of a list um, of all of the things that you've done um, pertaining to the location of your images. Now this is just Lightroom specific. So if I click all photographs, it's not all photographs on your computer, it's just all photographs that you've added to Lightroom or that you've imported into Lightroom. Um, you can see here all synced photographs. Now this is something for Lightroom Mobile, which I don't use. Um, all photographs, again, every image that you've brought in to Lightroom. If I click previous import, that gives me just the images that were previously imported. Usually when you import into Lightroom, by default, when you go back to the library, it gives you this window here. You're looking at just what you previously imported, okay? So that's typically where you're gonna start when you wanna start organizing. So I'm gonna click on previous import, we're already there. Now we're gonna figure out what to do with these images, right? And we're gonna go down to the folders section here next, okay? So the folders, where are these images? Now when you imported the images into Lightroom in the import dialog, you would have chosen where these images were going to go. If you're not familiar with that, take a step back and watch the importing video. All right, so these images are in the Kenya folder. If I click here, here, or here, you see they're all the same, right? 87, 87, 87. That's typically not gonna happen all the time. Um, but for today's purposes, again, we're just looking at 87 images from that Kenya trip. You'll notice that I imported them all into a folder named Kenya. That's important, right? I've made that distinction to throw those images into a Kenya folder. That Kenya folder is located on my hard drive, my C drive, I'm working on a PC. Um, and if there's a lot of things that you can do in this folders area. We're gonna talk about that in a second. So this area here is just basically where all your images are residing on your disk, on the physical disk attached to your computer or inside your computer. That's what's happening right here. So Lightroom has basically a pathing system. You import photos and Lightroom remembers where those photos are. It creates a path via the program to that specific photo. That's what allows us to look at all of them in the grid here. That's what allows me to go to the develop module and actually modify them. Um, but it needs to know, because it needs to know where these images are on disk. So that's what the folder section is. The collections area is another area that's just specific to Lightroom. Um, so it's a way to organize within Lightroom and not on disk, okay? Very, very important distinction, usually between these two, right? On disk, in Lightroom, on disk, in Lightroom, okay? Make that clear. All right, so let's talk 
talk a little bit about the folders, okay? So I went on this trip to Kenya with Aperture Academy, um, Stephen Oaks and a bunch of people, um, and I took a bunch of photos, a hell of a lot more than 87. I just decided to throw in 87 here um, just to make it a little easier to work around. So lots of stuff you can do in the folders area. For beginning, what I can do is I'm gonna I'm gonna do a lot of right clicking here. Um, so I'm gonna right click on this folder and I have a lot of options here. Lots and lots and lots of options. The first one that I wanna talk about is show parent folder, okay? So if I say, right click here and say show parent, um, right now it should say hide parent, where are you? Oh, that's right here. Hide parent or show parent. Uh, it's gonna show me the hierarchy, it's gonna go up one level on my computer to show me the folder that this folder is residing in. So it's subfolder upon subfolder upon subfolder upon subfolder and blah, 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 blah. Uh, not that useful, I'm never going to end up putting images on the desktop or in my, you know, I don't really need to see that. So what I can do is I can just click on this and just or click on the first one here and say hide, click on this one here and say hide. <laughs> It's just another way that just kind of help you visualize like where these images are residing on your computer. Um, this would be akin to opening up your file manager uh, like so and going to the desktop and then clicking Kenya or wherever your images are. You can see this is exactly how they are on disk. You never want to move images around outside of Lightroom or in your operating system. Um, when you imported those images in, Lightroom has made a path to that image, if you take an image out and move it somewhere else, since you didn't do it inside Lightroom, Lightroom now has no idea where that image is and you, you've broken the path. You will need to reestablish it by moving it back to where that photo was initially, okay? So we're gonna close this, we're not gonna open that back up again. All right, so I like that all these images are in a Kenya folder, but I really want to subdivide these images. I want to put them into their own subfolders because yes, they all were taken in Kenya, but there's also some other areas inside Kenya that these images were taken. Okay, so let's do that. Um, if I grab the first photo here and then shift and click on the last photo in this particular series, all of these images right here were taken in a place called Lake Nakuru and Lake Nakuru is in Kenya. So by default, I'm gonna do the exact same thing in my folder. So I'm gonna take all these images and I'm going to right click and I'm gonna select create a folder inside Kenya. I'm gonna make sure that this checkbox right here is checked that says include selected photos because I've already selected them and I'm gonna name this particular folder that I'm creating Lake Nakuru. And there we go. And if I hit create, it will deposit those images into that new subfolder. If I click on the little expansion arrow here, um, I'm gonna see that Lake Nakuru is now there. Um, now Lightroom is displaying all the images in this folder and all of its subfolders. So you see that there's still 87 images here and then 13 images within this particular subfolder. Um, if you don't want it to look like that, what you can do is you can hit the plus sign here and you can uncheck this box that says show photos in subfolder. So if I check that box, you'll see that in the Kenya folder, just in the Kenya folder, there are 74 photos. And in just in the Lake Nakuru folder, there are 13. Did see how that makes sense? The two added up together equal 87. Um, this is typically what you wanna do if you had some images like floating around and you weren't sure where they were. I hate that. Every image needs to be in its own subfolder if it's an apparent. Um, so we're gonna undo this for the time being. We're gonna say show photos in subfolders because once you get a lot more folders in this area, um, you typically wanna see everything that's inside them, right? So I don't wanna uncheck that box and then see that my Kenya folder only has like 70 something photos when in fact it has 87 or 1000 or whatever it may be. Um, so that's just a really useful tip if you're trying to find photos and put them into subfolders, uh, like say you missed some. Um, but we're gonna leave it like that as it is, okay? All right, next, we're gonna come down here and we're gonna click this photo and we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom 
Uh, we're gonna click just to right about here. We're gonna leave these three photos out for the time being because I wanna show you something else. So these, all of these photos, right, starting from here on, uh, from here on, these were all taken in the Maasai Mara. So I wanna make a Maasai Mara folder because that's also in Kenya. So I'll do the exact same thing I did before. Select all the images, right click, create folder inside, and then type in the name Maasai Mara. Include selected photos, make sure that's checked, and then hit create. And now all of those images are gonna be moved on disk into the Maasai Mara folder. So there's 71 images in there now. Okay, so I obviously missed a couple. So let's check this, or uncheck this box right here. And you see that in Lake Nakuru, there's 13 images. In Maasai Mara, there's 71. And just floating around loose in the Kenya folder, there are three. These photos need to go somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select all these photos by you know, clicking the first one and shift clicking the last one or maybe hitting command A or control A on a PC. And I'm gonna take these photos and I'm gonna click in the middle of the photo here and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag them to the Maasai Mara folder. And then you'll get this tooltip that says, are you sure you wanna do that? You're moving files on disk and you'll say yes. And boom, there we go. Now there's no photos arbitrarily floating around in the Kenya folder. They're all in these subfolders. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna just check this again so that I, when I, when I uh, make this go smaller, that I can see that it's not gonna say zero, like there's zero folders in this, you know, in this folder, uh, when in fact there are images in here. So that's an important distinction. I'm gonna check this box just to leave it there so I know that there's images here. If I uncheck this box, you'll see it says zero. There's no photos in the selected folder and subfolders are not shown. So that's a little bit confusing when you're working. Um, so I'm gonna keep that checked because I wanna see that. All right, we'll expand this again. And again, 13 in Lake Nakuru, 74 in the Maasai Mara. If you click this, you can also see that you can add a subfolder this way, right? You don't necessarily have to right click and say create folder inside. You can click here and you can hit the plus sign for add subfolder. And if I went somewhere else, let's say Samburu, it's gonna add, whoops, let's, ah, see I had a photo selected. So I messed up, let's, put that back where it needs to go. That was in Lake Nakuru. So again, if I messed up, I can just click this photo and just move it to Lake Nakuru and hit go. So the Samburu folder has no images in it. So I would either import images into this folder or whatever the case may be. I move other photos into it just to show you that you can uh, create subfolders just that easy. Uh, you can also add a folder on another hard drive if you wanted to. So I can click add folder here and I can create a whole new folder somewhere completely else inside Lightroom. So if I go to my PC and maybe click on this extra drive over here, um, I can right click here and say new folder and then maybe I'll put something like finished or eh, yeah, let's say finished Kenya pictures and then hit select folder. And now what I've done is I've added a new location to put images on another hard drive. Right now it has zero photos in it, but if I wanted to, I could take these images and I could move them down here. Or I could take an entire folder and I could move it to another drive. I could take a folder and I could move it you know, anywhere I want it works just the same way as an individual picture. You just grab the folder here and just move it wherever you want it to go. I don't necessarily need to move to another hard drive, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click this and I'm gonna say remove, because I don't, I'm not gonna do that. Um, if I don't have any Samburu images now or ever, I'm gonna, I can take this and I can right click it and say remove. So that's how you create folders and move images and folders around in this area. Quick tip, again, very important, don't do this outside of Lightroom. If you're gonna do this organizi organizing uh, this particular way, only do it inside Lightroom. Once you import those images, remember that path is created. If you remove the link to that path, this these images, Lightroom has no idea where they are because they're looking in a specific section of your computer. Once that link is broken, you'll need to reestablish it. There's no command Zing your way out of it, okay? All right, so that kinda 
breaks down the folders area, okay? Next, we're gonna talk about collections, and more importantly, the quick collection. So how do, how does someone like me um, organize my photos after I've come back from a trip, okay? How do I do it? Well, very basically, what the whole object of this is, is to get the images that you want to process and bring them away from all of the other images that you've taken. That's as simple as it can be. So when I wanna look at a photo or maybe wanna process an image, I don't wanna to have to sift through all the images in the entire Kenya folder. There might be thousands of images in that particular folder. And in fact, the last time I went to Kenya, I was there for about 20 days and I took about 7,000 photos. Wildlife photography is rough on space because you shoot prolifically throughout the time that you're shooting. There's an old adage that says, you know, on a landscape workshop, we'll shoot 100 images in a day. Uh, on a wildlife workshop, we'll shoot 100 images in the first hour or more. Um, you just shoot so much more with these wildlife images. So getting to the point where you can take some images out of the mix of all of the images that you have brought in and kind of take that little grouping and put them somewhere else it's essential that you do that. It's essential um, to make life easier for you when you're looking for images that you wanna process, okay? So let's do that, and I'm gonna use collections to do that, okay? So first step, after I import, I click on previous import. Then what I'm gonna do is there's very many ways to, <clears throat> um, to get to the loop view, because I wanna evaluate these images all large, you know, kind of full screen. Um, and before we get to there, I just want to make sure that we're you know on the same page here. Um, the thumbnails, uh, everything you see here, obviously this is a thumbnail. Um, if you want to make the thumbnails larger or smaller, if you navigate down to your toolbar, which is down here above your film strip, this toolbar right here, you'll see on the lower right hand side, there's a section called thumbnails, and there's a little slider here. If I make the slider go down to the left, it makes all the thumbnails smaller. If I make the slider go to the right, you can see I make the thumbnails bigger. Another way to do that is to hold down the command or the control key and use your mouse wheel. So if I move my mouse wheel while I'm holding down the command or the control key on a PC, I can make the thumbnails larger or smaller, okay? So that's, that's a really easy tip <clears throat> when you're navigating around in the grid view like this. But to get to loop view, loop view is going to help me make a decision on whether or not I want to edit that particular photo. So I start at the beginning chronologically, which is the default in Lightroom. You see it capture time right down here is my default sort. Okay, So the first image that I took on that trip uh, would be at the top. The last image I took or the most recent image would be the one at the bottom. Okay, so we're gonna start at the top. Again, previous import top. I'm gonna hit the space bar or the return key or the enter key or double click the photo. There's very many ways to do that. So if I double click the photo, we get there. If I space bar, we get there. If I hit the return key, we get there. And if I hit E, we get there as well. All of these things lead you to the loop view. I prefer using the keyboard, so I just like the space bar instead of double clicking. Once we get to that step, I'm kind of, I'm not gonna use the mouse anymore. <clears throat> There's no point. Um, when you can use the keyboard, I can have two hands on the keyboard and I can navigate very quickly with the arrow keys to get through my film strip. Um, and I'm gonna look at all these images big like this so that I can make a determination on whether or not I want to edit them. So the next step here is really just finding the images that you want to edit. That's it. And we're gonna put them very quickly in something called the quick collection. The quick collection is right up here in your catalog. You see it says quick collection. There's nothing in there right now. So we're gonna start populating it. So again, I'm going to loop view and every image that I wanna add to the quick collection, any image that I think I wanna process that might be decent enough to process, I'm gonna hit the B key, B as in boy. So B key and then go to the next image. B key, go to the next image. I'm not gonna process that one, nope, nope, yep, yep, yeah, oh yeah, nope, 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 meh, yeah, that one's cool, yeah, oh, no. Okay, so now we have taken a bunch of images and we've programmed Lightroom to add them to something called the quick collection. So. 
We're gonna click on the Quick Collection. You can also hit Command B or Control B on a PC to get there. And that Quick Collection now is a quick repository for 23 images. These are the images that I've selected. These are the images that I think I can maybe do something with, I can process. Um, it's not to say that all the other images are bad, it's just that I really have an attachment to these ones. These are the ones that on initial view, I can very, quickly just black and white yes no yes no yes no yes 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 no no you know so that's why they're going in the quick collection i use this quick collection as a task manager so meaning that uh, if I want to do something, whether it's finding images to process, finding images to email to somebody, finding images for a specific project, um, finding images to put on a slideshow or make a book or print, I'm always going to put those images in the quick collection first to get them away from all the other images that I don't really care about at that time for that particular task. So if there's something in the quick collection, I know that I have a task that needs to be completed. If there's nothing in the quick collection, then I know I haven't had a, I don't have a task ready for me. Okay, so that's what the quick collection is for. Um, <clears throat> all right, so I have 23 images in here now. Since I want to process these images, uh, that would be all fine and dandy to go, just go to the develop module and start processing them. But since there's only one quick collection and I use it for task management. Um, this task has to be sort of saved for lack of a better word, okay? So to save this idea of finding the best images from my Kenya trip, I'm gonna make a collection out of it. And you'll see at the bottom of your left-hand side here, collections is over here. So I'm gonna make a Kenya collection to pull these images away from all the rest of them and kind of highlight them, make them sort of special, okay? So I'm gonna hit Command A in my quick collection or Control A on a PC. That's gonna select every image that exists in that quick collection. And then I'm gonna go down to the collections area and I'm gonna hit this plus sign right here. And you'll see the tooltip says new collection. We wanna create one of those. So yes, create collection. I'm gonna name this collection Kenya, and I'm gonna make sure include selected photos is checked. I'm not going to check make new virtual copies. I'm gonna hit create, and then you'll see that now I have a Kenya collection, <clears throat> and all the images that were in the quick collection are now in the Kenya collection. They're all still selected, so I'm gonna hit B on the keyboard once again, and you'll notice that my quick collection is now empty which is exactly what I wanted. I have now a space that I can do a new task because the task of separating the great photos from all of the photos that I've taken in Kenya are now separated. But that's not the end of collections. You can also make smart collections in this collections area. Uh, a smart collection is basically just a way that Lightroom can automatically grab images and deposit them in something called the smart collection. So if I enlarge this area here, you'll see that we have some basic ones that are just the defaults. So video files, for example. So in this particular smart collection has been programmed to find every video file that exists in your Lightroom catalog and it will automatically deposit it here, okay? Photos from the last month, it will automatically find those photos and put them into this collection. If I right click this and say edit, you can see that here is the rule, right? Capture date is in the last one months, right? So that's, that's basically how you make or edit a smart collection. So I could go to the collections here, create a smart collection, and then I could name this one, let's say 7D Mark II, okay? So I wanna find all of the photos that were taken with this particular camera. All right, so I'm gonna put this collection inside smart collections, and I'm gonna say match all of the following rules. I'm gonna go to this area here where it says rating, and I'm gonna find camera info, and I want camera, and I want it to say, well, let's hit cancel here for a second. Let me go to one of these photos because I have to know what the image or what the Lightroom calls the camera. So I'm gonna go over to my library module here and I'm in the right hand side now and I see model Canon EOS 7D Mark II. Okay, so we'll go back to the collections, create smart collection, 7D 
mark to match all and I want to say camera info camera let's just say contains all and I'm gonna say 7 D whoop, mark two okay and then I'm gonna hit create and now I have a smart collection that is a Canon D 7D Mark II. Let's, we can move this back into Smart Collections. So you can see that by me just doing that, I can move collections around just like I would folders, okay? If I take this and I move it kind of out here, it's all by itself. If I collapse Smart Collections, you'll see it's by itself. If I move it into Smart Collections, it's inside this little box here. So what is this thing, right? We have collections and then we have this collection set. So you can make collection sets too. This is basically just like nesting collections inside with a lot of other ones. So for example, if I have a website that has a bunch of different landing pages for landscape, wildlife, rivers, streams, whatever it may be, I could make a collection set by clicking on the plus sign here, say create collection set, and I could name this website. Okay, we'll don't put it inside the collection set there and we'll create it. And now I have a new collection set called website and then I could make a create collection and call it landscape. I could make another one called wildlife and so on and so forth. So this is how you make collection sets and put collections inside collection sets. And you can also move photos from one collection to another. It's basically just gonna add the photo to that collection as well. So if I really, let's say I processed this photo really well, I could take this image and I could add it to the wildlife collection inside this collection set. Now it'll exist in both. It's important also to note that collections are completely separate from the folders. So these images that exist inside the collections also exist in the folders. They are not the same. They are completely separate. So it's okay to have a image that's in multiple collections. And that's why I didn't have you guys click the checkbox that said, make virtual copies, you know? So let's go back to that really quickly. And if I create a collection, let's say with just this image here, Kenya 2, Kenya 2, if I make a new virtual copy, then this particular image is now going to be different from the image that exists here. So to avoid confusion, do not do that. I'm just gonna delete this so that we don't have to worry about that. I never ever use um, virtual copies in that way. Um, so we're gonna delete this. You wanna avoid as much confusion as possible. So having a lot of virtual copies of a lot of images is just a pain in the butt that you don't want to deal with. Uh, once you get a little bit more in tune to Lightroom, I have nothing against them, but at the beginning, try to avoid creating virtual copies. So there's one other thing we should talk about, and that's deleting photos. Uh, no organizational plan is complete without deleting images. Um, I do not delete images um, really, uh, the only images I tend to delete are images that are pure white, pure black, or really blurry. Every image that I keep that doesn't look like that, that may be a bad composition, or maybe it's just uninteresting, um, I keep because that's a learning experience for me. I'll go back and I'll look at those images and I'll say, oh, you know what, I really didn't like the way I took that photo. Um, so the more images that I have that point that out to me, the less likely I am to make that mistake again. Um, because I'm just not interested. And then as my uh, photographic mind um, develops, for lack of a better word, over time, there are some images that I may have taken years ago that I've maybe come around to. Maybe I have different a different skill set in Lightroom that maybe I can process those images with those new skills that I didn't have before. So deleting images uh, is just not a very good plan for me because I end up going back and looking at those images at a later time. Um, whether it's for uh, compositional guidance or whether it's to process an image or reprocess an image that I thought I couldn't handle uh, at the time that I took it, okay? So to delete an image, it's very simple. Um, you cannot delete an image from a collection 
from the disk. If you go to your collections and you delete an image, it just deletes it from the collection. You'll see there's no tooltip that comes up. There's no window that says, are you sure you want to delete this image? Uh, it just deletes it because a collection and a folder are two completely separate things. One exists on disk, right? The folders and the collections do not. They only exist in Lightroom. The nice thing about deleting a photo from a collection is that if I hit command Z, it brings the photos back or control Z on a PC. It'll bring the photo back. It'll undo what I just did. So if I really want to delete this photo from disk, I have to go to the folder that that image resides in and then hit the delete key. Then I get the option to delete from disk, remove from the Lightroom catalog, which means that it just Lightroom just breaks the link, still is on disk, or cancel. We're going to hit cancel because you don't want to delete that image. You can also select multiple images to delete, like so, and you can delete all these at the same time. We're not going to do that, but that's how you would delete an image from Lightroom. There are other ways to do that that we'll cover in other videos, um, but this was just the kind of end-all, be-all example of organizing, okay? So there you have it. We've gone through organizing the folders, organizing the collections, moving stuff around, and there you have it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.